Celestis Juma is the director of the Harvard University John F. Kennedy School of Government's Science, Technology, and Globalization Project. Professor Juma is the former executive secretary of the UN Convention on Biological Diversity and the founding director of the African Center for Technology Studies in Nairobi. He is co-chair of the African Union's high-level panel on science, technology, and innovation. More specifically, one area that is very critical is pest control, because that's one issue that they have to deal with a lot. Many of the crops that they grow depend heavily on the use of pesticides. In many cases, the pests have already developed resistance. And so either entering into new agricultural markets or reviving collapsed industries like it's been done in the case of cotton in countries like Burkina Faso. This is only possible because biotechnology exists. The second trait that I think is very significant for uh, developing countries is uh, controlling weeds. Uh, if you take African farmers as an example, an African woman spends uh, up to 200 hours a year uh, weeding one hectare of land. And the period over which she does that is very limited. It has to be in the morning when it's not too hot. And by being able to provide herbicide-tolerant crops, this would free up women to be able to do other things. It has, in my view, it has a, a very powerful liberating effect, particularly on women. And the third area is going to be the area of drought control, especially for African countries. And this is in two respects. One is in, the, in connection with the drought in areas where farmers have already been using rain-fed agriculture. This is as a, in response to climate change. And the other area is the expansion of agriculture in areas that have been dry, been too dry to support crops. But because of the existence of drought-tolerant traits, farmers are then able to grow crops in areas that were not capable of producing anything. So the area of drought tolerance uh, is particularly important. And the, and the final one is going to be uh, thinking about areas that are likely to be flooded. Uh, we're starting to see the development of, of flood tolerant rice, for example. This is important because of climate change. There are some areas where we're starting to see more rainfall in areas that didn't experience flooding before. And therefore being able to manage uh, and being able to adapt crops to those changing conditions arising from climate change is going to be, uh, rely most significantly on genetic modification.